guys, this video is going to cover how to draw your haunted house project. Remember, this is a summative grade. It's going to be the last summative that we have on our term one report cards. So it's really important that you get this done and do a nice job. Um, this video will just cover the drawing part of this. There will be a separate video for the inking and shading which is the unit that we are working on right now. So if we are going to be looking at how to draw from a reference image, first things first, you're going to want to find that reference image. And remember that you can access that through the Google Slides on slide three. So anytime that you are going to be drawing from a reference, it's really, really helpful to look at the sides of the picture itself and then basically try to do a copy of that with the sides of your paper. So I will be using the negative space that's around the page to kind of help me decide where things go, how long things need to be, and where they kind of end up. So you'll notice here that there's like a bright white triangle in the upper right hand corner of my reference image. And I'm going to try to replicate that on my paper. Um, what that means is I'm going to look to about how far over the roof goes at the top and then about how far down the roof goes on the side. Now obviously there's going to be some variance because the reference image is most likely a lot larger than your paper, but you can shrink it down proportionally um, and use that as your overall plan for what you're going to be doing. This is something that takes practice and takes time to kind of figure out. You'll notice that I'm pausing quite a bit here to decide how I want to continue and looking at my reference image to sort of know how far down things go. This section of the roof that I'm working on right now goes to about the middle of the page before it stops. So you'll notice that I achieved that pretty similarly. <laughs> You also, if you wanted to, could use a ruler to make it a lot more uh, straight lines. However, that will kind of take away some of the variance that you can get in your lines just by hand drawing, and it's going to make it look a little bit more sharp. That's a personal preference that you can do either way, but just keep in mind that if you do use a ruler, it's going to be a little bit more important that you line up everything properly. So things like doing parallel lines, etc. Here I'm also going to mention that you can make your house look a little bit more spooky by slightly going not parallel as you go up to make it look like the building is kind of looming like it's coming up out of the ground uh, aggressively or malevolently. Um, you'll see that a lot in haunted house drawings and it's something that you can pretty easily replicate if you would like to. And from here on, I'm just going to continue to use my reference image. And now that I have this main central um, portion of the building done, I will be using that to kind of decide how far away, how tall things need to be, and how wide things will need to be to make this look realistic and kind of stay true to the reference image that I have here. So I ended up using the roof as another reference. I looked at about how far down it came before this next little pointy bit came up with the chimney, and that's where I decided to start the next part of the steeple and you know you're not going to get every single detail that you see in your reference image and that's okay these are going to be drawings so artistic license is a thing that we can kind of use to our advantage you can certainly omit certain elements that you don't necessarily want to draw you can simplify things if it seems like they're going to be very very complicated because the important thing here is that we are going to be making a house that's kind of spooky looking versus a house that is very, very realistic and true to the reference that you pulled from. 
This next part was me just discussing how you can scale down your house pretty easily if you need to by drawing on the inside of whatever your lines are. You'll notice that that made a smaller copy of what I have going on right now, and that's a decent way to kind of adjust your drawing without just erasing the entire thing and then trying again. So for the rest of this video, I am just going to continue adding elements from my reference image onto my drawing. You'll notice that I kind of jump around the page a bit as I am adding different things. And the reason for that is once I have certain elements put down on my paper, then I have a reference for where things go in relation to them. And that will help me get everything in the right place versus having things look kind of wonky. Remember to, you are the only one that is going to see your reference image, so you can really take a lot of artistic license here and make things um, kind of helpful to you as an artist, not too difficult, simplify where necessary, and then add your fun elements to make it look spooky.
once I have my house more or less done in a place where I like it, and I'm going to go back and add a couple more details, whatever, I will go into the drawing of what will make this house look a little bit haunted. So I'm going to be adding a couple different things, and you'll see me just kind of work around the page. You really can't go wrong here with whatever you'd like to add, but um, you know, it's going to look still slightly unfinished until you add some of your shading in. Also, please don't judge me for my bat drawing, like, I, who even knows what those are, but they're bats, okay? Um, so, you know, adding things like a, a big bright moon or b bushes that have, uh, you know, creepy eyes in them, pumpkins, spiderwebs, ghosts and ghouls, anything like that, and especially weathering your house, so adding things like missing bricks or shingles that are missing. Um, are going to be really, really cool elements to make your house look neat. Um, also, if you are trying to go for a scary house, don't draw cute pumpkins like I just did. So that is it for the drawing portion of our haunted house. Remember that you need to turn in this drawing to the drawing check-in assignment that's posted on Schoology by next Wednesday, November 4th, just so that I can make sure you are on the right track with stuff and um, making good progress with your work, since this is going to be our last summative of the term. Um, so have fun with it, be kind of playful, be creative, and I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. Enjoy. <laughs>